What should you be aware of before moving out and beginning to live independently for the first time? Take pics of the app before moving your stuff in. The carpet. The floors. Baseboards. Everything. Just to cover your ass. Some landlords are total pose and will try to keep security for a stain in the rug that was there when you moved in. Happened to me once. I moved out of a place and they tried to claim my deposit by saying they needed to thoroughly clean the house after I moved out of it. The contract said it needed to be left in the same condition as when I moved in. I sent them photos of the day I moved in. Showing amongst other things the mold on the walls. The dirty oven and the previous tenant's toenail clippings on the bedroom floor. Asterisk. Technically I did not leave toenail clippings behind. So it wasn't in the exact same condition. Buy a plunger before you need it. An add-on would be if the toilet does get plugged. Do not flush again. Turn off the water supply to the toilet and wait until the water level goes down enough to use the plunger. Once the toilet is unclogged with the plunger you can flush again. Turn on the shower when viewing the property and think to yourself can I live with this water pressure? This is smart. Also. Find out how long it takes for the water to get hot. And how long the heat lasts. I'd ask the landlord to turn the shower on during the showing. Just to see how it works. Offer to pay for the water heating for those minutes you normally use for a shower. If they get grumpy. It'll be worth the knowledge. First floor of an apartment building gets robbed the most. And deals with bugs mice rats etc that upper floors don't always have to. It's easier to move your stuff though. Keep your windows and doors locked. And don't keep expensive things like computers and game consoles within view of the windows. My last apartment was third floor. It sucked moving in out but it was relatively quiet for how thin the walls were and in the winter the heat would hardly ever run. The AC got expensive in the summer though. Never a single ant or spider which was nice. If you are renting, remember. All the stuff you buy. You have to move in a couple of years. All the little knickknacks add up, so do books. So do dishes. Etc. I started keeping this in mind when I was renting after tossing probably $1. 500 worth of stuff I couldn't sell and didn't want to move. That is a very good advice. It is your first place. Still young. Unexperienced. Live simple. Learn and in the future you can find a cozy place to rent or buy for the years. Don't buy unnecessary things. Save everywhere and always if you can. Leave some money to the side. You never know what CSN break or go wrong. The best advice I have for those planning on living on their own soon is write down what you do use daily for about a week. Literally every single thing you do and use. It will give you an idea of what you're going to buy on your own and will help you sort your budget. This is great advice. But it should be done for at least one full month. Different expenses have different timelines. Be weekly this. Monthly that. And so on. The person who was great fun to hang out with might be dreadful as a roommate. Life is not a continual party. Shared apartments work best among people who are honest. Responsible. And cleanly. Living with a friend really does make or break the relationship. People I've lived with 20 years ago are still my dearest friends with some of my best memories. Others I never spoke to again because of irreparable conflicts. I have learned that it's the little things that sneak up. 2. And that irreconcilable differences in lifestyle. Expectation. Habits can drive people apart. It's cheaper to eat at home than going out. I'll jump in on this one. Get a crock pot slow cooker and a Tupperware set. Then google all the amazing, and incredibly easy, recipes that will provide you meals for days. My husband and I were spending too much on eating out every month. It was in our budget but we'd end up going over. This month we decided not to put it in our budget and not go out at all. But raise our grocery budget a little. It has been so nice. I'm pregnant and when I have a craving I have a hard time concentrating on other stuff and a hard time eating food that's not that craving. I was really wanting panda. But we couldn't go out for it. So I went and bought all the stuff and made egg rolls and fried rice, the panda recipe, at home. 
It was so good and it was something I've never done before so it was a cool experience. Point is. Learning to cook new things can really save you money from eating out. Because honestly my fried rice was better than pandas. The amount of things you have to buy adds up fast. Stuff your parents wouldn't have made you pay for at home. Toilet paper. Paper towels. Cleaning supplies. Toothpaste. Hand soap. Dish soap. I feel like it seems like you mostly just need to budget for food but that's not the case at all. That stuff adds up and for me. It feels like as soon as I budget for one thing. Something else runs out that I have to buy too. If you have the money up front. Buying in bulk is much more convenient and will save you a lot of time and money overall. But of course. Not everyone can afford that. Don't get things on credit. Don't be afraid to buy second hand. Don't get a loan. Edit. So there has been some concerns regarding don't get credit if this is your first time living independently then if I were you I would avoid things on credit for the time being. It's a case of use credit at your own discretion. However there are some valuable points made below so don't immediately dismiss them. Just be careful is all I'm saying. Close bracket. The initial feelings loneliness. Was weird at first knowing people weren't just in the next room or gonna come walking through the door later. Took some getting used to but learn to love it. Neighbors can suck. They can make your first place a living hell no matter what you do or don't do. Get a plant or plants. They can brighten up an area in the winter. Caring for something can be helpful to keeping yourself in a routine. You can also grow some from food, I had a garlic clove sprout in the fridge so I planted it. I'm not saying you need to go all urban farmer but it can be fun as a project. If you're renting. For the love of god read 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 your contract. There's so many crazy things that could be hidden in there. Know what happens if you must break your lease and be okay with that. Good luck. Know what utilities the landlord pays. Usually trash. Sewer and heating. Maybe water. And which ones the tenant pays. Sometimes electricity. Cable. Internet. The electric company will turn off your power for failing to pay. And charge you an arm and a leg to turn it back on. Decorating is fun. Even if you are not super into design. Get some curtains in a color you like. Put up a few framed posters. Get a plant and a comfy blanket. It really does make a difference. And it will make the place a lot more welcoming to visitors. Close bracket. Don't be too trusting of people you don't know. Especially if they are trying to sell you something. If it sounds too good to be true. It is. Be aware of your naivety. If you are planning to have roommates. You need to discuss and come to an agreement on things like. Acceptable cleanliness. Boundaries with things like food or other things you have purchased chores and general expectations for your living space living with friends can be fun but if you are not on the same page before living it can be awful and lead to destroyed friendships i was one of the first to move out at 18 and so many friends and roommates will take advantage of you if you do not figure this out up front things like why should i take out the trash or clean i don't mind a pile of trash bags or a sink full of crusty disgusting dishes this is just an example of a real argument I had with a roommate. Food is another big one. I tend to like sharing food with people. But some people will not contribute the same quality or will not contribute at all. Keep shti clean. If you're by yourself you don't need to clean all the time. But you do need to clean. Don't let your house smell like ass. If you live with roommates. Beware when they offer food. I had roommates once that always made more food than they could eat. And would throw away any leftovers because they didn't like to eat leftovers. They told me I could take the leftovers for lunch at work. All was well until they stopped paying their share of the utilities. It wouldn't be so bad if not for the fact they would leave the lights on all night long while they slept. Which ran up my electricity bill. When I confronted them. They told me they shouldn't have to pay utilities because I ate their food food which they said they'd throw out anyway if they had mentioned those strings i'd never have accepted their generosity double quote also 
Never get into an argument with a roommate when they've clearly gone through half a bottle of whiskey. It won't end well. Make it your space. When people visit they're going to see the real you. Do you want them to see laundry piled up and dishes everywhere? Or are they going to see someone who's got their shti together? Cool stuff on the walls. Or whatever it is you like. Remember. Shti won't be handed to you. Make it your space to learn and grow as a human. It's only just started. Live in the space for a bit before you go wild buying everything you think you need. Get the essentials. Somewhere to sleep. Somewhere to eat. Something to eat cook with. And then add things gradually. You may find that you don't need everything you think you do. Or you might want something different. Doing this will save you money and let you be more selective, i.e. waiting for a sale to buy a TV. Dig or whatever. Whatever you were doing before for savings. You're going to have a tougher time doing it. But don't let your savings take a back seat. Continue to look toward the future. Also in the interest of saving. There's nothing wrong with moving back home. If you've got good folks. But my GF and I moved back to my parents to continue to save for a house. And even though a lot of people talk about it not one person explains adequately enough how hard it is to live back in your parents place after being on your own lol. I have an amazing. Inclusive family and it's still difficult a lot of days. That your parents were right when it comes to housekeeping and that you will learn this lesson real quick. That you need to cook food yourself. My mother was most certainly not right when it comes to housekeeping and I still struggle with the complete disregard for cleaning I grew up in. I'm doing better than she did. At least. Distances to places you regularly go. Whatever your mode of transportation. You need to take that into account when choosing a place to stay. It may seem reasonable. But having to travel miles to the store will add up. Meal planning. I still suck at it. But it's such an important skill. It'll save you so much time and money in the long run. A Costco membership is also tits if you can spare the cash and have room for bulk items. Their housewares are fantastic and will save you money. Remember to budget for the small things you might take for granted. I once went to a friend's apartment when they had just moved in. And they didn't even own a pair of scissors or a trash bin. I have been burned by the poorly insulated apartment electric heat combination. Old ass apartments that feel fine when you tour them in April and are great when you move in in August. But then turn on you in winter. Mixed with electric baseboard heaters and oof. I remember seeing my breath in my first apartment. I refused to turn the heat on any higher as we had a $400 electric bill. All the heat went straight out the window. I talked to my neighbor and he had an $800 electric bill in January of 17. I have another apartment that isn't well insulated and has stupid electric baseboard heaters. I am winterizing my apartment this week. I'll be putting that plastic wrap looking stuff around all the windows. Hopefully it helps. Make a checklist of routine things you want to stick to. Tidy up after meals every day. Gym however many times a week. Out of bed by X every day. And so on. It's really easy to let things slide when you're on your own. And all the little things can add up and eat at your self worth. Before you know it your I'll do the dishes tomorrow turns into I have nothing to eat off of. And mice. Set yourself a routine for chores and errands. We do all of our errands on Sundays and then do chores after. And try to do some dishes and sweeping throughout the week to make that day easier. It's all about discipline which I do not have lol. Landlords are parasites and will take any and every opportunity to FCK you over. Never. Under any circumstance. Trust a parasite. Have every single interaction with them in writing. If they call. Tell them to send you an email and hang up. Read up on your local laws and know not only their obligations. But your own. Because they will try to make you do something that isn't your responsibility and or refuse to do something that is theirs. Take photos or a video of literally everything. Every surface, every carpet, every window, every corner, everything. Because they will try to blame you for something and keep your deposit or charge you for some made up bullshit. If you're dealing with an estate agent or some sort of middleman to rent a place. 
remember that they are salesmen and not your friend. So they will lie to you to make you sign a tenancy. Alab. Chances are. You will be living with a roommate or housemate. Choose wisely. Try and find a roommate who has similar interests to you. Likes to be as tidy as you. Has a job. And you feel comfortable with. Be wary of renting with friends. I lost three good friends that way. Be considerate to your new roommate. They are not your parent and may feel resentment if you expect them to pick up after you or carry the entire household burden on their own. Basically. Don't be a dick. Don't have sx with them. And don't do things like have your partner stay all the time. The same goes in reverse. They should be just as considerate to you. And finally. If you don't feel comfortable living with that person. Don't stay in that situation. Even if you're renting and it's not your forever home. Decorate. Hang a picture. Get a plant. Etc. No need to break budget on this at all. But my fiance and I live in an apartment and we didn't hang anything on the wall until about 10 months in. It made a huge difference once we hung a few photos. Made it feel much more like home. And don't stress too much about holes in the wall. They're easy enough to patch when you move. Make a list of every object you use in a day. Then buy what you need when you move. Not having a ladle or a toilet brush can put a stop to your plans or make things awkward. You're going to get into arguments with the people you live with. Don't let it get in the way of relationships. Best way to avoid this is by adding all your bills up together. Dividing by 4 and putting this amount aside each week. Then pay all bills on time each month and save yourself a lot of unnecessary stress with whoever is in charge of the bills in the house. Bad habits. Without people around it might be easier to fall into them and harder to get out. For instance be wary of becoming dependent on alcohol, video games, etc. Animals are wonderful living companions and can make living alone so much more bearable. But they can be incredibly expensive to upkeep especially as they age. It also makes traveling incredibly hard if you have pets but no one to watch them keep them whilst you're away. Kenling alone can cost hundreds of dollars for a pupa and even more for two. I'm 16. But my aunt recently moved into and out of an apartment. Just because it looks clean doesn't mean it's perfect. Also check reviews of a place before actually deciding to move in or not. Also don't talk to strangers. And if you have a boyfriend girlfriend that just isn't cool. Drop their ass. Alright good luck you will be fine. Keep some extra tins of food. Stuff you use but that don't go out of date quick like dry paste and rice as well. Just make sure you use it when it's close to going out. I swear it took away a lot of stress for me when suddenly people started panic buying at the start of covid. Even if the store was to be stripped bare. I would still have enough extra. And no need to go full prepper mode or anything. Just take a shelf in the cupboard. Buy second hand furniture and electronics. You'll probably move a million times as a young adult and new stuff is an unnecessary expense. Save your money till you settle down proper. Regardless of your income. You can manage your expenditures to match. Take the time to learn how much money you spend and manage accordingly. One meal out will cost $10. But if needed you can make a chicken soup that will last 6-8 meals off the same $10. Mooch off someone with a Costco membership to buy a $30 bag of rice that will feed you for a year. Do what you need to to make sure at the end of the month your bank account is bigger than what you started with. Probably once a year something big will sneak up on you in the order of $1 K like car repairs. And if you weren't lean during the good time. The bad times will really suck. Aside from taking pictures of the apartment or house you move into. Make sure that you get roommates that are financially responsible if you are gonna split the rent. Nothing sucks worse than having a roommate come to you and say I can't make my rent can you loan me 50 bucks? Because that'll become a habit real quick. Learn what you can buy from a dollar store. What you can buy generic brands of. And what you need to buy name brand of. For example. I wouldn't buy Ziploc bags at the dollar store. You get like 8 to a box. When you could spend the extra $2 on a 100 pack. 
but I would buy the generic brand from a grocery store. Except if I was buying the freezer bags. Then I prefer the name brand. Same with things like cream cheese, get the name brand. Condiments, get the name brand. Cleaning products, dollar store, etc. You'll find out where you prefer to buy certain things from. But also, don't cheap out on things like toilet paper. All the things you really like, if you love your name brand potato chips. Don't get the generic brand. If you like pickles, splurge and buy the big jar. After a few grocery trips, you'll know what you like to have around and what you can sacrifice. There is no magic involved in how everything seems to tidy itself up. Clothes being clean in the closet suddenly. Beds getting made etc. Someone actually does it. And in your new home. That special someone is you. All the bills you're responsible for and how much your grocery shop will cost. In the UK there's rent. Council tax. TV license. Gas. Electric. Internet connection. Entertainment. Netflix etc if you use them. Travel costs if you take the bus or train. Car upkeep. Payments and fuel if you drive. Contents insurance. Car insurance. Mobile phone contract paid costs. And your grocery costs. Then once all of your living costs are considered. Then there's any other bills you may have e. G. Credit card bills. Anything left over you have to consider furniture, if you don't have any. Clothing. Shoes. Gifts for family friends, birthdays or Christmas. Keeping money saved for emergencies, e. G. Car repairs or replacing an expensive electrical item, and or any holidays you'd like to go on. And then finally whatever is left is for your own enjoyment. Familiarize yourself with the renter's rights in your state. I can't count the number of landlords who took advantage of me in different ways because I didn't know what my rights were. Thoroughly google the person renting you the new place. Take pictures of the furniture and walls there. We didn't do that with my friends and we were evicted few months after moving in. Because our landlord was straight up psycho and certified sociopath. We nearly ended up in court over money he refused to give us back. Be sure. That you calculate your expenses. Monthly food. Entertainment and emergency money. Just read that you are from CZ. So am I. If you have any questions. Feel free to send me PM. I had to move back with parents after 3 years. Because I broke my leg and then corona hit. I can definitely tell you the ups and downs of moving away. Colon. Close bracket. Beware that your first apartment is most likely going to be shitty because of the excitement to move out on your own. Don't go for the very first place that you see. Judge it heavily. Look at everything. Also beware of neighbors. If they are in the same building and one of your neighbors has a bug problem it's everyone's problem. You have to clean your kitchen way more than you ever expected. Also. You will have a favorite burner on the cooking range. Nobody expects it. But everyone has it. There are lots of things worth getting at the dollar store initially. Then replacing as you deem them important. Hand towels. TP. Paper towels. And most things you eat should be bought elsewhere. Name brand seasonal things can be great at the dollar store. Easter themed Ziploc bags. Holiday hand soap. Summertime plastic cups and plates. Etc. Only lend what you can afford to lose. You want your roommates and neighbors to like you for convenience at least. But don't trust them with anything you can't afford to replace. Even accounts. Because they can charge extra stuff to your card or lock you out of your account. How to be a complete and total cheapskate when necessary. How to scavenge. How to do without basic things. Where to get various things for free. The best thing I did was eventually get a car. It breaks down the barrier to so many activities and events. No more reluctance. Procrastination or excuses. I met the most important people in my life because of the events I attended and teams I joined. I can volunteer weekly and people are often surprised that I am not local. I spent most of my work from home extra time hiking and I can even do astrophotography even if I don't have a backyard. 
In a couple of months you may think you're lonely because you've been alone for longer than you're used to. But don't panic or take that feeling seriously. It's all part of the journey and use those moments to read something new or learn a new skill. It's the best time for growth. Get your staple items sorted out. Small shti that adds up. Shampoo. Toothpaste. Spices. Etc. Shit. Even toothpicks and aluminum foil. Laundry detergent. Cleaning supplies. You don't realize until you need it. Live cheap until you have a financial backup plan and cash to back it up. Shti happens and you might need to haul ass out of a bad place asap. What are your local rental laws? Who can you call to help you move? Do you have rent and bill payment for a month or two if you lose your job? Basically. Have a rosh tea and run plan for your living place. Second. Fire up your maps program and see what is around your neighborhood. Nice way to find local businesses not on main streets or public hangout places like parks and walking trails. Finally. The library is your friend. Free internet. Free books and. Cheap. Movie game rentals. Scanning and printing services. Great for free entertainment and self-betterment when everything else is too expensive. Boundaries. Everyone and their dog is going to want your place to be the chill place. And before you know it your BFF has clothes in your closet and food in your fridge. Which is great until they start acting like a roommate that doesn't pay for anything. Get a slow cooker. You'll have fun cooking for the first couple of weeks but it can become a chore even if you enjoy it most nights. Get a slow cooker. Make chili. Or pulled pork. And set it overnight. Or before you leave for work. Then when you come home. Dinner is ready to go for a fraction of what takeout costs. If you're buying used furniture. Make sure to thoroughly inspect it for bed bugs and their eggs before buying it and bringing it into your home. How to budget for things. Life is hard. Don't make it harder by mismanaging money. If you don't need it. Don't buy it until you know you got all the things you do need covered. Save money for a rainy day. Because shti happens and often at the worst time. I didn't see it posted here. But my now wife taught me a very valuable lesson 10 years ago. Your money isn't yours. At any given time. Someone just takes it from you. Didn't see the sign? Your car just got towed. Easily $200 gone. I'm in Texas and have a full time job. I went to the ER recently and have insurance. $2.000 visit. Car parked overnight not in the garage. Stereo stolen randomly. Your money isn't yours. People with more of it just take it from you. Make a savings. Get 6 months of expenses in it. Do it a sap. Then. Get your Roth IRA maxed out yearly. Don't steal from your future. It'll be an amazing nest egg. Follow those two and you're on a very good path for your future. Dishes are a pain in the ass. Don't just leave a dish for later. Because it only makes it easier next time. After a while you have a sink full of dishes with diet on food that will take half an hour to clean. If you do each dish when it's dirty. It'll be easier to clean and you'll always have clean dishes. A spacious apartment or house with vaulted ceilings looks nice. But you're the one that will be cleaning and heating cooling it. Those higher ceilings and big rooms cost so much more for gas electric not to mention rent. Those big rooms are great for entertaining but you still have to sweep mop vacuum and clean them all by yourself, unless you have roommates. If you do get a roommate. Don't live with a friend or a new significant other. Living with someone is one of the fastest ways to destroy a relationship. Familiarity breeds contempt. It's a lot easier to like someone when you don't have all of their bad habits being shoved down your throat or you're able to get away from them. Not that there aren't exceptions. How to shop for groceries and cook your own food. This is the number one area that people flush money down the toilet along with the Taco Bell diarrhea. A single person can easily live on $50 a week for food. I've also seen a single person spend $400 on food in a week. You should also have a good routine on cleaning your space. Not just your room. But the kitchen and bathroom as well. I know it sounds old school but literally write out when your bills are due. 
Missing a few payments here or there may seem like no big deal but they follow you for 7 years and every future renter and creditor will judge you unrelentingly harshly for it. Ask what the average for utilities are in your building and budget for that amount, if not more, every month. Pay them on time. They will dent your credit report if you don't. Take pics of the app before moving your stuff in. The carpet. The floors. Baseboards. Everything. Just to cover your ass. Some landlords are total pose and will try to keep security for a stain in the rug that was there when you moved in. What natural gas smells like? Had a friend who left hers on via an unlit stove and complained about headaches for a few days until someone happened to come over to her apt and realize what was happening. For some reason. She had gone 24 years without learning about what gas smelled like. Or why you would want to make sure not to leave it on. You don't have to buy new. I have sourced tons of used home goods for cheap free through the following. Thrift stores Craigslist Habitat Ray Store Facebook Marketplace Next Door Rich Neighborhoods Dumping Perfectly Good Furniture on the Curb Facebook Buy Nothing Group or a local Facebook group. Depending on your location. Today I bought a topographic map of Yosemite. A soap dish. High quality Tupperware. A serrated knife. Velcro for craft projects and a book at the local thrift store for $5. Last week I got a shovel for free. It takes time. Patience. And knowing the neighborhood. But I enjoy the hunt. Best of luck. The Morsh. T you have that you value. And care to replace. The Morsh. T you're gonna have to replace when it gets broken breaks down gets lost stolen. And X200B. Also car insurance is billed every 6 months to a year. I was shocked when the insurance salesman quoted me a few hundred dollars. I had to ask my mother why that was. Honestly thought I was gonna be paying that every month. Do not put liquid hand dishwashing liquid in the dishwasher machine. If you do this. It will foam up and flood everywhere like an episode of I Love Lucy. If did this and turned on the dishwasher just before going to bed. That flood will sit all night and ruin the kitchen floor. And you won't get your security deposit back. If you're moving with roommates. Ask about their pet peeves and discuss a basic schedule. Pet peeves might be leaving bags next to the door. Putting paper plates in the trash face up. Leaving water bottles around. If these match up to things you tend to do. Be aware of them. They will cause tension later. As for schedules. What time do you go to bed and wake up? Are you guys light or heavy sleepers? Do you have smoothies for breakfast at 6am? Play the drums at midnight? Have your partner over to visit every weekend? Know that if you sleep till noon and your roommates likes to start their day with Zumba in the living room at 7am. You better be a heavy sleeper. Stuff like that. Learn how to use a washer and dryer. Do not put the powder in the top. Put it either on the clothes water or in the compartment it goes in, if it does, or in the cylinder in the middle but not in the cylinder lid on the middle. People don't know how to wash clothes. It's not necessarily a ton of hard work to keep your house clean. It's small consistent habits that break up the workload and make efforts more effective and you'll need to actively create those habits for yourself. Wiping and cleaning things frequently to maintain equals less work scrubbing off crusted material than if you let it build up for a while. Vacuuming the whole house instead of one room at a time lowers the amount of time before the floors get dirty again. Picking a few things up off the floor each day means fewer times spending the whole day organizing a big pile of junk. If you wash dishes as you make dinner there won't be a massive pile to tackle after eating. How much extra stuff you never realized you needed and how much stuff costs. Soap dispenser, paper towel holder, or thing to hold your toilet brush etc. Why are garbage cans so expensive? You have to pay for everything. Nothing is going to be free and you will have to buy stuff you never thought about before. Not just bills but stuff like cleaning supplies. Mob vacuum. Light bulbs. Garbage bags cans. Pots pans. Plates. Bedding. Extension cords. Tools etc. When you move out make sure you have everything you need or are able to get what you need. 
It will surprise you the amount of things you never thought about needing until you no longer have access to those things. Make sure you check out and photograph every little thing that is even slightly broken or discolored before moving in. Most managers are pretty cool about things and are usually aware and are fine with it. But if they get bought out the new company might be douches. Also. I live in a town that is basically a giant ant hill. Everyone has sugar ants pop up somewhere at some point. I generally always put ant traps around the apartment when I move in and never have any major problems. Except once. Great rejects. So much harder after the fact. If you're moving in with roommates. You will have conflict. There will be issues about noise. There will be issues about cleanliness. There will be issues about food. About money. You name it. And X200B. If you're going to go live with people. Ask about all of these things. If it's shrug meh. Or we each do our own cleaning or some stupid shit. I'm telling you. You're going to hate yourself at some point and wonder how you got in this mess. That 3am on a Tuesday late night FCK session from your roommate next door that you can hear like it's in the same room. That 23 boxes of pizza and 4 cases of empty beer bottles laying around 2 weeks after a party. That blasting music TV all day every day. Some people are assholes. Don't leave it up to chance. Choose your roommates wisely and learn to set boundaries. Seriously it's no different than living with and so. Definitely learn to cook. It's much cheaper eating home cooked meals. But way less enjoyable unless you know how to throw a few decent dishes together. If you are renting from a private landlord and are responsible for utilities. Try to get information on average utility bills. I once rented a super uninsulated apartment with electric heat and my energy bill peaked at $600 for a single month one winter. That hurt. Before you even move out keep an eye out for deals on pots, pans and other durable items that you need on FB marketplace and other second hand sites. Be extremely careful with any soft furniture or rugs that you buy on the cheap, or possibly avoid it altogether and go new. A bed bug infestation is no fun. Even if you've found a place to rent. Make sure you have a plan of where to go temporarily in unforeseen circumstances. The lady I'm renting from terminated my lease in the middle of COVID because she wanted to take in her mentally ill brother who had nowhere to go. She did give me two months to find a place but if you are on a budget. Finding a good place within your means might take longer than that. Not to mention checking out the place. Running a background check. And all that. It's easier to clean once a week than wait until your place visibly needs cleaning tidying. It should take no more than 30 minutes to wipe things down. Throw out the old stuff in the fridge. Etc. Wait until things get crusty and you'll be scrubbing for hours. Same goes for laundry. If there's a washer dryer in your new place or on the property. Pick a day and do it every week. Waiting until you have no clean underwear is a rookie mistake. Also. It usually makes more sense to wash your dishes by hand immediately after use than wait until they fill the dishwasher or worse. Stack everything in the sink until they become gross. Cleaning one just used plate and fork takes less than a minute. Whereas having no clean dishes when you're hungry sucks. I learned all of these things from my mother. Broke every rule when I moved out. And discovered the hard way that she was right. Buy things like a plunger. Fire extinguisher. ETC before you need them. Always best to have something before an emergency hits. Meet your neighbors. Always good to see the people in your area. Who you might want to be friends with. Who you might want to keep at arm's length. Etc. Don't let people. Rather family or friends trash your place. It's your place and your rules.